there's only one fundamental reason to go to a national park. And that is to, to strip yourself of your industrial persona and to become more basic again, to feel the, the quality of solitude and silence. If you take those things away with industrialization, then everybody is going to have a compromised experience. Now to a story almost unheard of in this economy. There's a modern day gold rush going on right now in North Dakota. It's called the Bakken Formation, a vast 200,000 square mile area. It was the Bakken oil boom has brought jobs and newfound wealth to North Dakota, but there is a cost. The region's unchecked development is on a collision course with one of America's truly special places. This is the beginning and just the beginning of what will be a massive invasion of the heart of Roosevelt country and the heart of Theodore Roosevelt National Park by oil development. In 1883, my great-great-grandfather, Theodore Roosevelt, came to the North Dakota Badlands to hunt bison. The majestic landscape inspired his lifelong commitment to conservation, a legacy that endures today. But the national park that now bears his name sits in the heart of the oil-rich Bakken, over the last decade, technological innovations in energy have accelerated drilling and fracking in the region. As a result, the park's three separate units are becoming islands in a sea of development. Over the last three or four years, we've seen a lot of changes as the oil development has ramped up uh, exponentially around us. Already there is peripheral damage to one's experience in the park. You can't sleep in the campgrounds without hearing it. You can't approach the park without going through oil traffic. There is visual blight, and soon this encroachment will come from every direction on all three units, and they will be literally surrounded by a level of industrialism that nobody could have predicted. Well, if things continue unabated, I think we're going to see our big game wildlife populations out in the western third of the state reduced by at least half. Currently, much of the drilling in western North Dakota is happening on private land. But in the coming years, development will accelerate at a breakneck speed on public lands right outside the park's borders. Even the moderate industrialists predict that there will be between 40,000 and 60,000 fracturing wells in the West River country of North Dakota in the next 20 to 30 years. And so what that inevitably means is that virtually every place where there's oil shale to be exploited will be exploited. Ooh, what a sunset, huh? Jan Swenson is a native North Dakotan. She heads a grassroots organization working to protect the state's public lands. She fears the tipping point on Theodore Roosevelt National Park is near. It used to be that you came up to this, to this spot in the park and it was total black. You didn't see a thing out here. But as you will notice, if you start over here, you see a rig and a flare, and you move over and you see a flare, there's no reason that those wells won't be right up to the park boundaries. There is a fear drilling could even happen inside the park itself. Drilling already occurs within 12 national park units across the country. And Theodore Roosevelt National Park is one of 30 more parks the government has identified as places that could be drilled. All of this demonstrates that energy independence must be balanced with the permanent protection of our truly special places. Conservation must be part of the conversation, or else we risk losing the very essence of what my great-great-grandfather found in these wide open spaces. Nobody is saying no to oil development. We need the energy, we need the jobs, but we can slow down and take our time to plan it and to do it right. And when there's that much oil and that much profit and that much employment, we as an enlightened people can afford to say, but we don't have to do all of it. We can choose a few really magnificent and fragile places that we agree to save. As my great-great-grandfather Theodore Roosevelt once said, conservation is a great moral issue. 
He saw the spirit of America in the North Dakota Badlands. Please share this video with your friends and family so we can spread the word and make sure that that same spirit lives on for generations to come.